Hey everybody, welcome back to the Good Art Travel Company. Um, today I just want to take a little bit of your time and uh, talk about um, an article that I ran across here recently. And uh, I know I've done a video a couple of weeks ago about small cruise ship sailing. So if you wanted to take a cruise to Alaska this year, you actually can still go cruising. It just has to be on a much smaller ship. So anything under 200 passengers, the CDC has not uh, put any restrictions on uh, small cruise ships with uh, less than 200 passengers. So um, today I wanted to talk uh, about a, a specific company that uh, I really, really love their business model. Um, they, uh, they do uh, small ship cruises um, in Alaska, the Northwest uh, Passage, um, Hawaii, and I think the Galapagos Islands, and I'm not certain where else. Um, but they had their, uh, their first cruise uh, this month, and it might have been one of the first cruises um, in, in the U.S. territory uh, this year. But uh, so they, they started their cruise. Uh, early uh, early this month, I think it was like uh, July 28th or something like that, and uh, and they were only operating at six at 60 percent capacity, so they had about 32 passengers and I think like four or five guests on board. So it's about a total of of uh, or, or four or five crew members, uh, 32 guests. So it was about 36 people, some somewhere around there, total uh, on board this ship, and uh, and about midway through their cruise. They, uh, they had gotten a call from the Alaska Health Authorities stating, guess what? Of course, somebody aboard the ship tested positive for COVID-19. So they, uh, they immediately quarantined uh, everybody aboard the ship. Um, they figured out who all, you know, this person had contact with on the ship. Um, they uh, turned the ship around, came immediately back to Juneau, Alaska and put everybody up in a hotel, pay for everybody's stay in the hotel. Um, and also on this ship, they had, uh, while they were on the ship, they retested uh, the passenger uh, that had tested positive and uh, whoever they had contact with. I think they also retested everybody on board the ship. But I'm gonna share my, my screen with you guys because we're gonna, we're gonna look over this article. But anyway, they turned everybody around, put everybody in a hotel, um, and then, then uh, the test that they had given on board the ship turned out that the passenger uh, did not have COVID. He tested negative. So it actually turned out that, um, that the uh, positive test was actually a false positive done by the uh, Alaskan State Health Department. Um, and so they, they canceled the cruise, took everybody back. Uh, they ended up canceling all their future cruises. Uh, they had about five left in Alaska and a couple, I think, in the Northwest. Um, and it's it's incredibly unfortunate. They they did everything that they could possibly do. This company did everything they could possibly do, put all sorts of protocols in place, and they followed it to a T, and they did an excellent job of, uh, of, of quarantining everybody and then taking care of everybody. And it turns out that the uh, state had a, had a false positive test and it totally screwed everything. Um, it's like, why, you know, wh how, how does something like this happen? But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna share my screen with you guys and we're gonna run over this article real quick. I don't wanna take up too much of your time. So here's the article, um, was it a faulty test or just an inadequate system of testing? Um, you know, I, I don't know. Um, so, uh, so we'll run through here. The Uncruise Adventures Small Boat Adventure Company confirmed that 32 of their wilderness adventure, 36 quarantine guests were cleared and released over the weekend and have returned home. Um, they quarantined in Juneau Hotel after one passenger tested positive for COVID-19 and the boat had to return to port in the middle of a seven day cruise. That was the uh, only scheduled sailing of Alaska this year. Uh, I think they had others scheduled for this year, so I don't know what you're talking about. But um, So the COVID-positive uh, guest returned home just a few days later after Uncruise tested him again, and the test turned out to be negative. Uh, the company introduced a swift contingency plan and a strict quarantine last week after the guest was told by Alaskan 
health authorities that the uh, that he had tested positive um, just before he left uh, Juno on the boat. So um, we're going to go. Uh, we're going to look at the. Uh, they've got a little timeline here of what exactly happened. So we'll run through it. So if you want to go to Alaska, it, whether it be on a cruise or anything else, you've got to get tested within 72 hours. Um, you have to have a negative test in order to get on the plane to fly to Alaska. So first off, this person had a negative test to begin with before he even got on the plane. Um, so that was uh, on July 28th. So August 1st, uh, Uncruise began its cruise. And uh, so what happens whenever you get to Alaska, to the airport, they retest you again. So you get tested before you get on the plane to go to Alaska, you get tested again upon arrival. But the thing is, it's not a rapid test. Um, it's, it, you, don't, you get that test back within 72 hours. So they let you go ahead and do your thing, uh, go ahead and get on the cruise ship and all that um, while, the, while they wait on the test to get back. So the first mistake they made, there, there needs to be better testing, period. The, the tests need to be done uh, within an hour. They need to have rapid testing done and I know these tests are going to get better in time and hopefully more accurate. Um, that way, you know, they could have resolved the situation beforehand. Uh, so while they were on board, August 4th, the guests received a phone call from the state of Alaska saying they had tested positive. Um, August, they, they put contact tracing was immediately implemented by the state had to figure out exactly who he had contact with. Uh, the unidentified guests and four traveling companions were retested on board the vessel by trained staff. So the staff, is trained to deal with this situation, um, which is awesome, and they handled it great. Uh, the whole vessel had to return around to Juno. Um, all guests were securely quarantined at a local hotel in Juno, and it was covered. Everything was covered by on cruise, and the crew stayed aboard the vessel and had to be quarantined aboard the vessel. Uh, all guests, all crew, everybody was tested again, and everybody received received negative tests back. So nobody had a positive test. Um, and then on August 8th, uh, guests began flying home. And uh, as long as well as the guests who had tested positive in Juno, Juno and was traveling to Maine. So, um, so it was a negative test and it just totally, um, totally kind of messed, you know, everything up. Um, so they, uh, you know, it's talking about the, the, the CEO, uh, Dan Blanchard, um, they, uh, they canceled all their cruises, you know, it's, it's unfortunate because I mean, he's right. Unfortunately, the demonization of cruising, um, has gone and it's, it's raised a frenzy within, uh, within everybody, uh, out there, uh, in, in the public. So everybody raised a uh, big stink about it. Um, but it turned out that, um, like I said, you know, it was, it was a, it was a false positive test. But the bad publicity right off the get go um, had messed everything up. Uh, so they went ahead and they, they canceled everything um, for the uh, for the next uh, ten weeks. Uh, and you know, of course, they've they've uh, took a tremendous hit financially. Um, ha just you know, as as everybody has. Uh, in the in the travel industry, you know, I'm I'm following, uh, you know, a lot. Of, I work with a lot of a lot of tour companies, um, you know, and I I read a lot of articles and the uh, the impact that obviously all this has has had. You know, we we don't necessarily think a lot about it, um, how big of an impact it's it's had on not just us here in the states, but uh, worldwide, and uh, a lot of people are struggling. You know, and you got um, a small um, kind of family-owned, uh, great business um, that uh, did everything that they possibly could. They put all these great protocols in place, and it didn't fail them. They did everything that they did, but uh, the, the state failed them with the uh, with the negative test. Um, you know, and it's just, uh, I mean. It's very, very unfortunate, like I said. So, let's see what else. Um, so, yeah, like I said here, you know, the goal should be to get testing uh, that delivers results much faster than three or four or five days because, you know, it's, it was 
I get what they were trying to do. You know, they you get a negative test before you get on the plane. You get there, you get tested again. But the whole 72 hours, two or three days, um, especially when cruising, it just kind of messes everybody up, screws everybody, you know. Um, but uh, like I said, you know, they did a, did a really good job um, in reacting to the situation. And um, but that's, that's pretty much it, you know. Um, they, they've been all lobbying with Congress for rapid testing. That would, that would change the game, obviously. But, you know, these rapid tests also have to be accurate. <clears throat> you know, you can't, you can't be having uh, false tests, you know. But, I mean, I guess with, with rapid testing, at least, you know, if you, if you get a positive test, you can, you can go ahead and do a, another retest to see what it, what it says. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I just wanted to drop in and talk a little bit about that. Um, here's some pictures of, uh, of them aboard the ship. They've, they've got a skip where they can take people um, to the shore to uh, do hiking, bushwhacking, and all that stuff. So it's kind of cool, you know. They're better wearing their masks. Uh, kayaking. Um, these, these small ships can get to places that a lot of the larger cruise ships cannot get. And the prices are, are really good on these small cruise ships. They're, they're in comparison to uh, many of these other ships. Um, just a really good company, and I, I kind of hate that, that for them. But, um, but it is what it is right now for all of us, you know, and uh, everybody's doing the best they can, and things are going to get better. Things are definitely got to get better, right, guys? They've got to get better. I mean, can it, can it really get any worse? Can 2020 possibly get any worse? Knock on wood that uh, <laughs> I probably shouldn't have said that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we're doing good. So I just want you guys to kind of keep in mind a lot of the um, – whenever you do start traveling again, really keep in mind uh, the, the smaller companies, smaller tour companies. You know, if you can use a tour company – um, then use one, you know, they need your help. Uh, these other countries definitely need your help. They're missing, um, American tourists for sure. So I know everybody's super excited to get back out there and start traveling again, including myself. Um, you know, don't, uh, don't let fear, don't let fear take over. Um, everything's going to be okay. And, uh, we're going to get back to some normalcy at some point so make sure you get out there and stay active and uh, i'll keep you guys updated with more articles uh, more news anything kind of happening out there in the travel world um, it's pretty much my job is to keep track of all that stuff and then to keep you updated so if you have any questions uh, feel free to reach out to me and comment below this video and uh, we will let you go with that and i will talk to you guys on another video appreciate it We'll see you. Bye.